All right, this is section 5.4, solving special systems of linear equations. And uh, today is kind of going to be a little bit of review. We've talked about some systems of equations that have different answers. They don't really have a solution. So we're going to look at a few examples today. Um, this one says your cousin is three years older than you. Uh, you can represent your ages by two linear equations. So y equals t and y equals t plus 3. So the y represents the age. Now t is your age. Okay, so you are t years old. And then if you take t, your age, and add 3 to it, that's going to be your cousin's age, who's 3 years older than you. So it says graph both equations on the same coordinate plane. Okay, so uh, y equals t. We're going to assume that t is the same as x, right? So this is our t-axis, which is our x-axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what our y-intercept is, and then we're going to see what our slope is, and we can graph the line. So for the first line, it doesn't have a y-intercept. The y-intercept would be 0, right, plus 0. So I'm going to put a point right down here at 0, and then I'm going to count. Uh, now, the coefficient there with our t isn't there, so it would be a 1, right? So the slope would be 1. So I'm going to count rise 1 and run 1, and I'm going to put points all the way through my graph, um, so I can draw, try to draw a straight line. Remember, I'm not on notability, so this is not going to be um, super, super straight. Okay, so that line represents our age. And I'll do this red line uh, to represent our cousin's age. They have a y-intercept of 3, but they have that same slope of 1. So I'm also going to rise 1 and run 1 for them. So if I do that, Remember my answer, we know from the graphing systems of equations 5.1 homework, uh, we know that the answer to this is where they intersect. My problem is that they don't intersect, right? You may recognize these as being parallel lines. So it says, what is the vertical distance between the two graphs? Well, they're always three units apart. Well, why would that be? That would be because no matter what age you are, your cousin will always be three years older than you. You will never be the same age as your cousin. So when it says explain what this means, we would say this has no solution, right? They don't intersect. Now, we've used the term no solution and many solutions before. This would be no solution. There's no answer. There's no age and there's no time or age when your two ages will be the exact same. That cannot happen. Your cousin and you are never going to be the same age. He'll always be three years older. All right, this next problem says let x and y be two numbers. Here are two clues about the values of x and y. First clue says y is four more than twice the value of x. So we have to write that as an equation. Um, as an equation, it says y is, which means equals, y equals, four more than twice the value of x. So because it says rise, write this in slope-intercept form or use slope-intercept form, I'm going to do that twice x first, two times x, and then four more than that would be plus four. And it says use slope-intercept form to graph that. So I'm going to have a slope or a y-intercept here of four. My slope is rise two, run one, or I can go down two and left one down to left one all the way through my graph. Let's see how straight I can try to make this line. Okay, there's that one. And then for the second clue, it says the difference of 3y and 6x, which means to subtract, right? So the difference of 3y and 6x in that order um, is equals 12. Now, this one says use standard form and graph using the intercepts. Just to remind you that, you know, we did that last chapter, so we can do that. Instead of writing this in slope-intercept form, which we could do, it wants us to use standard form. So, standard form, remember, has the, um, it's AX, whoops, it's AX plus BY equals C. So, it's got um, the X variable first. So, that means we would need to write this as negative 6X plus 3Y equals 12. Now, remember, using the intercepts means that we have to um, uh, plug in 0. So if I want to know what the x-intercept is, for example, I'm going to plug in 0 for y. So if I plug in 0 for y, then that means 3 times y is now 0. So remember, anywhere on the x-axis, the y-coordinate is always going to be 0. So then I've got negative 6x equals 12, and that means x equals negative 2. 
So I put a dot right here at negative 2 on the x-axis. Now, to find the y-intercept, that means I plug in 0 for x. Remember doing this earlier, um, last, or last semester, I should say? So then I got 3y equals 12, and that means y is going to equal 4. And then so my y-intercept is 4. And what you can see is these two lines that we have are exactly the same. So it says graph both equations. We've done that. Do the two lines intersect? The answer is, yeah, they do. The whole line intersects, right? It's the same exact line. So when it says, what is the solution? Well, if, you know, two lines can intersect at one spot, they cannot intersect like we saw in the last problem, or they can intersect the entire way through because they're the same line, and that would mean that we write infinitely many solutions or all solutions. Right? Remember, we had equations earlier in the year where we put many solutions or all solutions as the answer because everything you plugged in for x gave you an answer, the same answer for y. So we've got the same line that's many solutions, and that's what we're talking about today. Today's lesson's pretty much over with now because that's just we're just reminding you that we can have all or no solutions. So a system of linear equations can have one solution. That's normal, right? They, ha they only intersect at one spot. So right there, that would be our answer. It can have no solution, which means you have two sets of parallel lines that don't intersect, or infinitely many solutions, meaning it's the same exact line, the lines are the same. So those are our three types of answers. One solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. All right, let's look at a couple examples of this. It says solve the system algebraically and graphically. So I want to prove it algebraically to you and graphically. Uh, remember, algebraically, that means using substitution or elimination. And then graphing, obviously, we know that means on a coordinate plane. So both of these equations are already in slope-intercept form. So they're good to go. The first one has a y-intercept of 1, and it has a slope <clears throat> of rise 3, run 1. So that's going to put us here. So then I can draw a line that goes through, that was really bad, but I can draw a line that goes through uh, those points. And that's our first line. And then for our second line, um, it's y equals 3x minus 3. So I've got a y-intercept of negative 3. And then I'm again on that same slope of rising 3, running 1, puts us right here. And these lines don't intersect. They're parallel lines. So our answer would be, oops, I better write it over here, no solution. <clears throat> so no solution. So there's graphically, it's really easy to solve it graphically if they're already written in slope-intercept form. Now, because I have to do it algebraically as well, um, what I would want to use here is substitution. Because y equals 3x plus 1, I can plug 3x plus 1 in for y right there. So 3x plus 1 equals 3x minus 3. Now, if I was solving this um, like a normal equation with variables on both sides, I want to move my variables to the same side by subtracting 3x from both sides. But when I do that, you may this may look familiar from earlier in the year, they cancel out. And when they cancel out, that's when that red flag goes up and we're like, uh-oh, it's either all solutions or no solutions. We are left with a statement that is false. So this would be no solutions. Uh, one does not equal negative three. So regardless of how you do it, substitution or you could use elimination still, you'd have to move some things around here, or graphing, your answer is always going to be no solution. These There will never be an intersection point of these two lines. All right, next up, we've got 2x minus 4y equals 10 and negative 12x plus 24y equals negative 60. Um, so we can rewrite these in slope-intercept form so we can graph them. This is what's going to make, you know, graphing take longer. Um, so I got negative 4y, and then we're going to move the 2x over to the other side as a negative 2x plus 10. And then we're going to divide every single thing by negative 4. So y equals negative 2 divided by negative 4 is positive 1 half. And 10 divided by negative 4 is going to be negative 2.5. Now, I can write this number as a decimal. I want to write the slope as a fraction always because it's a slope, rise over run. But I can write the y-intercept as a decimal. That's fine. So to graph this first one, negative 2.5, that's not in a really good spot, um, but right there. And then I can rise 1 and run 2. 
and rise one and run two and rise one and run two and do the same thing on the other um, side. That's going to put me right about there. Now for the second line, uh, again, I got to move some things around. So that's going to give me 24 Y. Uh, I'm going to move the uh, negative 12 X to the other side as a positive 12 X equal or minus 60. And then I'm going to divide everything by 24. So Y equals one hat 12 divided by 24 is one half 12 24 is one half. And then 60 divided by negative 60 divided by 24 is negative 2.5. So again, you probably couldn't tell right away, but these lines have the same y-intercept and they have the same slope. So it's the same exact line. My answer is going to be many solutions or all solutions, we can say for short. Now, if I was wanting to solve this algebraically, I would definitely use elimination here. And uh, I could multiply the top equation or I could divide um, I could divide the bottom equation by 6, right? I could divide by 6. That would give me a new equation of negative 2x plus 4y equals negative 10. And then now that I, my x's, actually my x's and my y's are both lined up, so I would add these two together. And uh, 2x plus negative 2x is 0. Negative 4y plus 4y is 0. So there's nothing left on that side, so it's 0. And then 10 equal or 10 plus negative 10 is also 0. So everything goes away. Everything got eliminated. And I'm left with a true statement. And that's where we would put all solutions. So algebraically and graphically, we get the same answer here. All right, we've got one more to go over. Um, solving graphically and using algebra. Um, the first one here, we have, it's not in slope-intercept form, so we're going to move the 2y over to the other side, make it negative 2y. We're going to move the x over to the right to make it negative x plus 10, and we're going to divide every single thing by negative 2. So y equals negative 1x divided by negative 2 is going to be positive 1 half x, and then 10 divided by negative 2 is minus 5. So we have our y-intercept of negative 5. We have our slope of rising 1, running 2. Okay, and that's going to give us, draw as straight as possible, um, that line right there. And then for the other one, we have to move the um, 2x over to the other side, so that's going to be negative 2x minus 1. And then we're going to divide everything by 3. So y equals negative 2 thirds x minus one third. Okay, so this is a little bit of an issue. This is why graphing isn't always the best way to go about um, solving a, sy a system of equations because it's not always easy to do. Uh, negative one third is going to be barely past the negative part of the y-intercept, the y-axis there. And then I'm going to go down two, one, two, over three, puts me right there. And then down two, over 3 again puts me right there. So I'm going to do my best. And when I draw that line, it appears that they cross right there. But I can't really be sure because I didn't do this very accurately because I had to graph the 1 third right there. And that's not the probably exactly where it's at. So this is where using algebra is always a good backup plan. If you're confused and graphing isn't making sense, you don't have software to graph. Now, I know on your big ideas, they graph the line for you. That makes it easy. But if you don't have software like that to graph, um, then I would really suggest using algebra. And, and for this one, I would use substitution because we already have x solved for. So 2 times in place of x, I'm going to plug in 2y plus 10 plus 3y equals negative 1. And we'll just solve that. That's going to be 4y plus 20. Make sure you distribute to both of those numbers. Plus 3y equals negative 1. And then we've got 7y plus 20 equals negative 1. We're going to move the 20 over by subtracting 20 to get negative 21. And that means y equals negative 3. Okay. So for the x variable then, now that we know y is negative 3, we can go right up here and plug in negative 3 so that we did 2 times negative 3, 
for, this is for x, right? Um, 2 times negative 3 plus 10. So we have negative 6 plus 10, and negative 6 plus 10 is going to be 4. Um, so our coordinate point then, we actually do have an intersection. So this is one where we have one solution, not no solutions, not infinitely many. We've got one solution, and it's 4, negative 3, which is exactly where we thought it would be. 4, negative 3, get the intersection right there. So it, it is always better to check using algebra if you're not sure if graphing isn't quite accurate for you. So there is actually a way you can tell how many solutions you'll have without having to graph or without having to use algebra. Uh, and the best way to do it is if you have your equations written in slope-intercept form, which remember is y equals mx plus b, then check something. I want you to check, first of all, what are the slopes, right? So you've got two, you got two lines, right? You've got two of these. So you got two of these equations. If they have different slopes, then they will intersect somewhere. So if they have different slopes, then there will be one solution. And you can see these lines up here, they have different slopes. Not only is one positive and one negative, but even if one was positive and the other one was um, even steeper than positive, um, well, they still intersect, right? So if they have different slopes, there will always be one solution. They will always intersect somewhere. It's when the slopes are the same that we run into the, the all solutions or no solutions. So if you have the same slope, then you have to then check the y-intercepts. Are the y-intercepts different like they are here? These two lines have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. They are parallel, and that means if you have different y-intercepts, same slope but different y-intercept, that means there's no solution. But if you have the same slope and the same y-intercept, same slope, same y-intercept, that means the lines will be the same. Everything about it is the same, and you'll have many solutions. So again, if the slopes are different, you'll always have one. It's when they're the same that that red flag goes up, right? And you're like, okay, x variables are the same. Something's wrong here. So if they have different y-intercepts, then there'll be no solution because they're parallel. And if they have the same y-intercepts, then everything about that line is the same with the other one, and there will be the exact same line. There'll be many solutions. Okay, so let's look at a homework problem from the 5.4 homework. It's number 20. It says, does the system shown always, sometimes, or never have no solution? Okay, so we're checking to see if it has no solutions. When A equals B, when A is greater than or equal to B, or A is less than B. Match the answer and reasoning with the comparison of the coefficients A and B. So that sounds complicated and confusing. But notice that A and B are the slopes of these two lines, so the co x coefficients, right? So as we just said, if the slopes are the same, so I'm looking for a same slope, and the y-intercepts are different, then we will have no solution. The two lines will be parallel. If the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are same, then they're the same lines. But you can tell that these y-intercepts are not the same, right? They're different. Okay, so let's start off the first one here. Um, what happens if A equals B? Well, if A equals B, that means the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are different. So it'll always be no solution. So I'm looking for one that says always the lines are parallel. Okay, that would be the same thing, right? So that's gonna go right there. There'll be no solution. So now let's check what happens if um, A is greater than or equal to B. Well, first of all, if A is greater than B, then the slopes would not be the same. They'd be different and it'd be one solution. But because they use that little equal to symbol, the symbol right there, that means A could equal B. So the answer would be sometimes. Sometimes they may or may not be parallel, right? So they may or they definitely, it's not going to be this one. They, they, when it says it may not have the same y-intercept, no, they definitely don't have the same y-intercept. Um, but they may or may not be parallel. It just depends on if A equals B, like we saw earlier, or if A is greater than B. And then finally, it says, what about A is less than B? Well, if A and B are not the same, and A is less than B, so they're not the same, then they could never have the same slope. 
And if they don't have the same slope, then I don't even need to check. I know I'm going to have one solution. So I'm looking for never. Um, the lines have different slopes and different y-intercepts. That'd be this one right here. And that's going to go there. Okay. So, yeah. those. So just check back on the... Um, uh, the last thing we were talking about, and, and just double check, make sure you know when it's going to be one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. I thought I would do this one with you because it's kind of weird the way they worded it with, uh, does it always, sometimes, or never have no solution? That's kind of a weird way of asking a question, but it does, it does make your brain think about it for a little bit. All right, on this last question, I'm willing to offer five extra credit points for anyone that can show me what the solution, or does it have a solution? Um, so five extra credit points. If you can write a system of equations, you have to write down what the system of equations is and then solve it. You do not need to use graphing. You can use substitution or elimination. And show me what your answer is. Is it going to be one solution? If so, give me that coordinate point. Is it going to be no solutions? Or is it going to be many solutions? So I'm willing, to, like I said, to give five extra credit points tomorrow to anyone that can show me that they've written the system of equations down that describes this problem. You have to use the picture, right? You have to use this picture. And then solving it to tell me if it's one solution, and if so, what is it? No solutions or many solutions. So this is section 5.4, and let me know if you have any questions.